All right, let's get to who is eating good in the neighborhood. That is presented by Applebee's. And who's eating good? The Washington Commanders. And they did it without Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels was banged up. He's dealing with the rib. Mariota comes in. I know it's just Carolina, but Rod, he lit him up. 18 of 23, 205, and a couple of touchdowns. It didn't, it hasn't mattered. Whoever Washington puts in so far, they've been tearing it up. Yeah, and I just think it speaks to the stability of the organization. And you start to look at some of the players that they brought in leadership wise. Bobby Wagner is a 10 time All Pro. Zach Ertz was a good player for a long time. Austin Eckler, those guys, those guys really set the tone for the locker room. They're not huge names or anything like that. I mean, Bobby Wagner is. He's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. But those other guys are just really good, steady players. And you need those type of guys in your locker room. And, Coach, I think uh, Cliff Kingsbury, my former teammate, I think he's done a great job of developing um, Jay McDaniels and, and also, you know, taking this offense to the next level. I agree with you. You have to give Kingsbury props. Uh, what he did with Daniels as a rookie coming in and playing that way. And then, okay, he goes down. And now Marcus Mariota comes in and has the same type of game. So he can call a game for Jaden Daniels and put up these type of numbers. But then he calls a game, what's Mariota comfortable with? And he plays great. So they've got it going on offense. Uh, their defense is playing aggressive football. Dan Quinn's done a great job. These guys are eating good, and no one, no one expected them to be in first place in the NFC East right now. And I think they're the best team in the East no uh, without question. Yeah. Yeah, and, and they just feel like they're going to get better. They got four games with 200-plus rush yards as well, and it's time for the team's most in a five-game span, talking about points, the team's most points in a five-game span going all the way back to 1983. So they're scoring points. They got a young quarterback, and they're making it happen. The Baltimore Ravens, the Ravens are looking good. Lamar Jackson's back in the leader in the clubhouse, the favorite position for the MVP. Could he go get another MVP? And he was just lighting it up on Monday Night Football, Coach. Yeah, I was there in the stands just watching as a fan, and we talked yeah. about their identity, and they're running Derrick Henry, and they're pounding it, and they're, they're bringing Justice Hill in. and you know, getting after you. So now you got to just gang up on that running game. And then the play action passes are wide open. Lamar's hitting the guys, throwing the ball like, like crazy. Uh, they're playing lights out offense right now. And they're another team that's eating good right now. They struggled early this season with their offensive line trying, you know, because they had three new guys, but their offensive line is starting to come together. Your boy, Ronnie Stanley, he looks like he's getting healthier. He's moving. Yeah. He's moving extremely well. And once again, no matter how good you play Derrick Henry, you might stop Derrick Henry seven, eight straight times and your defense is pumped up, coach. We always say this. Eventually, he's going to break a couple. And that's what happens. And when he gets out in the open field, he's big, he's fast. But also, J um, Zay Flowers, the toughness of this kid. This kid gets thrown around. He gets hit. And he just keeps – he's a special talent. He just keeps fighting. I love his toughness, Jack. Yeah. Go ahead, Coach. They, and they – uh, they have a variety of weapons. You know, we talk about Derrick Henry and Flowers is exceptional. But then you look at them and Bateman has a big game Monday night. And then we we're talking about Likely and how good he is. And Rodney loves Likely. Well, now Mark Andrews shows out on Monday night. Yeah. And you just say, wow, man, they, they've it's got cool. weapons all <laughs> over the place. Yeah. I mean, and cool. Year, that's the other time. They got yeah. three tight ends. They do. They got they three tight ends. Back. They got two really good running backs. Go ahead, Jack. No, I was just saying they got they got three tight ends and they got a fullback. Probably the best fullback in the NFL. It's old school. <clears throat> Sorry. So they got 873 yards for Derrick Henry. The next closest is 667 for Jordan Mason. So, Rod, he leads the NFL by 206 rush yards. He's already about to hit a thousand rush yards talking about Derrick Henry. And the main thing is just keeping him healthy. And Derrick does a great job of taking care of himself and his body and things like that. But that's the thing. And that's why you can rotate Justice Hill in because he gives you something a little different. You're still going to get that downhill running. You're going to get an added, some added quickness. But this guy, this, he's a smaller guy, but he's tough. And that's why I love the Ravens. And that's why every week, Coach and I, we're always screaming, run the football. Because when you run the football, you establish that physicality at the line of scrimmage. Everything else comes from that. 
and we can talk about all these skill positions and weapons, and they've got them. But watching from the stands, I counted six times when Todd Bowles dialed up a blitz, and they had a free blitzer unblocked on Lamar, and they couldn't get him down. Six times where he just beat a guy and made something happen, ran away from him, made yards. They couldn't get him. And he is he's General uh, Lamar right now. They, they cannot handle him, and uh, they, they've got it going. Yeah. Is he the MVP, Rod? Anybody else you want to throw in there? Or is he the MVP to you? Who's, who's better than Lamar Jackson at this point right now? Everything that he's doing, his leadership, him passing the ball, him running the football, just everything that he brings. I mean, without Lamar Jackson, this team would definitely be in trouble. But I love the one-two punch of him and Derrick Henry. They're just yeah. going to keep growing in this offense. Hmm. How about for you, Coach? Would you go Lamar? Uh, would you go Josh Allen? Is there anybody else you'd throw in that mix of MVP through uh, seven? Josh Allen is playing playing great football uh, right now, not turning the ball over. Uh, they're winning. Lamar, watching that performance uh, the, the other night, really, uh, really got me, though. Right now, if I had to vote, um, he'd get my vote. Yeah. yeah. It's not it, close. Put it like that. It's not even close. <laughs> it's still only a third of the way through the season, though. Let, let's be patient. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The crazy thing is it probably would be Lamar one and Henry would have a chance to be number two. So you might have, it's almost like, who's it? Kurt Warner, Marshall Falk. I think we're the last couple to do that, but it's, it's really hard to do that. All right, let's get down to uh, the green Bay Packers. Roddy, it's a team. I know you wanted to talk about. You've been hot on them. Even since week one, we were watching them over there in Brazil. Yeah, absolutely, Jack. And you look at offensively all the young weapons that they have, and I love their offense. But to me, it's been this defense. This defense, they're front four, and they're healthy. That's the thing. You know, Detroit, they lose Aiden Hutchinson, but you got Kenny Clark, Kenny Clark playing extremely well. And in, within that front seven, those linebackers, Edron Cooper, who's one of their top linebackers, he's a young guy. He's starting to get acclimated, starting to play at a high speed. Eric Wilson, he made a bunch of plays. And I like the secondary. They're highly competitive, led by Jair. He's going to talk trash. Xavier <laughs> McKinney, he's been absolutely outstanding. And I'll tell you another guy, a kid that – plays extremely well, does so many multiple things. Is Keyshawn Nixon. He does so many things for this, for this um, secondary. He can tackle. He can cover in the slot. I just like where they're heading on the defensive side of the ball. We know they can put up points. Um, Jordan Love, he's thrown probably a little bit, few more interceptions than what we anticipated. But I'm telling you, this defense is starting to turn around. And to me, that that's the quiet part of it. We know these guys are a good team. They're in the playoffs last year. They beat Dallas, and we always talk about their offense and their young receivers. And uh, they've got, uh, you know, a complete group on that offensive side and a great young quarterback. But defensively, what they did to Houston last week that was really impressive. We've talked about C.J. Stroud and how good he's been and how calm in the pocket and all the weapons he's got. They held them under 100 yards passing, held them to less than 50% completions because they were all over them. Rodney talked about that secondary. Um, they, I don't think they get enough credit right now for what they're doing. Five and two, their, their starting quarterback was out for a couple of games. They're playing good, good football. And that, that NFC North race is going to be something. It, it is. It really is. You're so right. I mean, Green Bay is three straight wins. They beat the Rams. They beat Arizona. They beat Houston. Probably the most impressive of those was Houston, which we just saw. Are the best teams in the NFC right now in the North? I mean, I, it just looks like all the best teams, Minnesota, Green Bay, and then Detroit. Is there anybody better that you would say in the NFC as a whole than what we're looking at in the North? And then you have to look at Chicago, too. Chicago is coming on, and they're playing. Caleb Williams is playing better. So those are going to be dogfights, and they may not have the best record because they're going to have to play and battle against each other. But those are four good football teams right now. I agree with you, Coach. Nobody wants to go and play against the NFC North. I mean, before, you, used to, you can mark the Bears as a W. Now yeah. you have to really prepare because these guys, they compete, they fight. They got a, a really competitive defense, and Caleb Williams is starting to get better. But I, I agree with you, Coach. I, I love this NFC North. This is going to be fun. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.